Hey, welcome to another year of beer blog. Uh, this is the first of the beer blogs where I'm opening a uh, beer that Chad has sent me. Um, I'm really looking forward to this, partly because uh, I am drowning in emails at the moment. I'm really considering committing what they call email suicide, which is just where you've got so many emails, you just don't answer them, you just delete them and pretend that you never received them. So if you've emailed me recently and I haven't got back to you, I'm sorry. I'm, hopefully I'm going to get around to it this evening. Anyway, but not before I have a beer, um, because that's a wonderful way just to chill out and just kind of go to that third place in between uh, work and home. The beer we've got tonight, Captain Lawrence Brewing Company Imperial IPA. Um, I had a quick look at the website. That's, I've got to say, I don't normally look at reviews of beers or get too much info from the website beforehand. I did have a look, in fact I'm looking now at the, the, the Captain Lawrence website, it's not telling me a whole lot about the beer. So, in a spirit of discovery, let's, ooh, let's get the cap off it and uh, can I smell that from there? That would be crazy if I could. Look at that lovely pale gold, slightly hazy. Lovely golden IPA. Oh goodness, that's uh, it's got really, really big, pungent, powerful, kind of like pine and yeah, there's kind of like a sweet fruitiness going on in there as well. Pine and sweet fruits, definitely. That's good. That's really good. You know what the interesting thing is? That if I'd had this beer two or three years ago, I'd be going absolutely nuts for it because it's a really, really big, full bodied IPA. Really big fruit. Almost a slightly bready thing going on there. So you've got that lovely interplay of malt and hops. The hops are giving all the sort of the, the tropical fruitiness and the, and the pine and a little bit of the spice. And the malt is giving a really big, sort of slightly bready backbone against 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 which the hops are, are balancing. And then just at the finish there, you get a really nice bitterness just coming through in the aftertaste. It's not big. It's you know it's it's really really restrained IPA. You can tell that the ABV is fairly high on it. It's got a lot of body, it's got that kind of slight slickness that really really big um, or really strong beers have. But it's also got that quality that I like to call a, a ruinous drinkability. It's one of those beers that you could easily drink quite a lot of without even noticing how strong it is. Mm. But what I was going to say, this is a really, really good beer, and thank you, Chad, for sending it to me. And if I'd had this a couple of years ago, I'd be turning somersaults at like, how incredibly intense and... It's intense, but it's balanced. It's great. It's got a, Just after the swallow, about 15 seconds after the swallow, you get the bitterness just coming through. The balance in this beer is absolutely astonishing. But it isn't a real, you know, massive riot of, of aroma in the way that you know, something like, you know, Pliny is the one that everybody talks about. And it isn't a beer like that at all. It's actually a very, very kind of smooth, restrained, I would say, more of an English style IPA. Because it's just got that balance and no characteristic in it is, is too exaggerated. And I actually quite like that. I like that a lot. But it's interesting that increasingly what, you know, what here in the UK we're seeing from American craft brewing, which is drawn on English brewing traditions and, you know, the American brewers have made them their own. What we're starting to see in American craft brewing to a certain extent is perhaps um, a slightly more restrained approach, whereas here in the UK what we're seeing is people using hops with an American sensibility, really going over the top, producing really big, incredibly hoppy beers. So there's a continuum on which you can place this, where, you know, at one end you've got, I don't know, Pliny, and then at the other end you've got I don't know, Carling Black Label. And this sits pretty far at that end. 
But the interesting thing is that there are there are English beers on this side of it. You know, this sits this sits in that spectrum. It's incredibly full-bodied and balanced and elegant, and it's actually a really, really wonderful beer. I suppose it's part of that dialogue that I keep talking about between sort of brewing cultures. And clearly, this you know, although this is this is very much an American IPA, it's got a really, really nice restraint and balance to it. And, you know, like I said, I don't really know anything about the brewing company. I didn't do too much research. I like to try beers without, you know, looking up and seeing their rate beer scores or looking at what, uh, you know, what they say about it on the brewery website. I was just curious to look at the brewery website to see if I could find out how strong this is. It's an Imperial IPA. I'm guessing it's kind of, you know, I don't know, 9, 9% maybe. But it doesn't drink it at all. It's a wonderfully balanced, rounded beer. So that's it. Captain Lawrence Imperial IPA. An American beer with an English accent, which I quite like. Um, I'm looking forward to drinking the rest of this and hopefully getting this up on YouTube tonight. So Chad, thank you man. The guys at Captain Lawrence, thank you for brewing this wonderful beer. And um, I hope to see you all again soon. Cheers man.